This video is brought to you by Toyota. I was living in Indianapolis and I moved back to Philadelphia to be closer to my family. I was probably 32, 35, something like that years old. And I literally walked up and down Boathouse Row knocking on doors asking if anybody wanted a coach. And I got a coaching job at St. Jude's University and we rode next door at Crescent Boat Club. And I was there for about two years and, and Steve Arova was the head of the Schuylkill Navy at that time, which is right next door in this building we're sitting in today. And Steve asked me to become involved in the Schuylkill Navy. So I became the delegate from the Crescent. That was my first involvement in the Schuylkill Navy. And uh, did that for a couple of years and eventually became the Vice Commodore. And when Tom Dowd uh, stepped down as director of Stokesbury Cup, I was uh, one of three guys at the meeting and uh, said, yeah, I'll, take, I'll help out with this. So Ed Lucas and I took it over the first two years. And uh, Ed stepped back and I continued doing it. So I ran the Stokesbury Cup. I was the director of the Stokesbury Cup for God for about 19 years. So I grew up in suburban Philadelphia, Lafayette Hill and Bluebell. And I went to Devon Prep and they had a rowing program there. And so I started rowing as a freshman in high school. Uh, we used to row at Upper Marion Boat Club. And uh, I rowed there for four years. And then I went to Notre Dame and I uh, Cox and coached for four years through Notre Dame. So I've basically been in Notre Dame since I in rowing since I was uh, 14, 15 years old. I competed in the Stokesbury Cup Regatta. Uh, I, I honestly have no memory of it. Uh, I was coxie a boys four. Uh, I do have a memory of it. Uh, we were doing pretty well. It was Devon Prep, we were doing pretty well. We had a horse C4 that was doing pretty well through the Manu Flex. And uh, the week before Stokesbury, the guy that was stroking the boat, his younger brother threw a book across the living room and Angus stuck his hand up and the, the book caught his finger, broke it, pen it back and broke his finger. So we rode the, the, the heat at Stokesbury with a broken finger, and we did miserably, and we were eliminated. That's my memory of competing in the Stokesbury Cup for God. So unlike uh, Al and uh, George and all them, I wasn't one of the, the guys that was on the medal stand year after year. But of course, when they, when they do well at Stokesbury, and, and, and maybe 10 years later, they become Olympic athletes. You don't know, at that, day, at that day, know about it. So you don't know they're going to become an Olympic champion uh, when, you, when you present them with their medals on the, on the dock. So, uh, as you know, Mike, uh, you know, one of my jobs is presenting medals and trophies, and it's something I, I very much uh, enjoy doing. And one of my favorite stories is, is about the, uh, the Phyllis Graham Trophy, which is named after my mother. Now, my mother ran trophies for the Stokesbury Cup for about 10 years, and she's since passed away. So we named, we named a trophy after her, and it's, uh, it's given to the girls lightweight eight, uh, lightweight four, girls lightweight four. So now lightweights are, by definition, girls that are 130 pounds or under. So what we always tell the girls is, I introduce one of my nieces or my sister or somebody to help out, and we present them with the trophy. And the trophy is maybe uh, 10 inches in diameter and about eight, eight deep. It's a chalice-like thing. And we explain to them that the very first year we gave this trophy, the girls sent us a video afterwards, weeks afterwards. And what they had done is they had gone home and filled the trophy with ice cream. And the five girls sat around and ate the ice cream out of the trophy. So girls, this is your job this year. We want you to take this trophy home, fill it with ice cream, and enjoy it. And so that's our thing. This video is brought to you by Toyota.